Hello, friends. I just wanted to take a minute to introduce the next episode you're about to hear on Hashtag Win Today with Johnny Martin. I had the great pleasure recently of traveling to New Orleans, Louisiana, as a guest of World Wrestling Entertainment and John Cena to attend WrestleMania 34, which took place live from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in NOLA. During my time in New Orleans, I had a chance to sit down and visit with a dear friend of mine, Mr. Dan Bame of ICM Partners. Dan is the talent agent that represents John Cena and his agency represents folks from across entertainment, music, movies. Uh, it was an unbelievable conversation I had with Dan around the importance of building relationships, fostering trust, creating a brand, and what his non-negotiables are in life. This is a must listen slash must watch episode, not just for those looking to break into the entertainment industry, but for those that are looking to be significant in anything they choose to pursue. Dan is working at the very, very top of his game. And it's not because he is a genius around the entertainment industry, but it's because he is an absolute genius in developing sincere, grounded relationships with good folks. So thanks as always for your love and support and tuning in. And enjoy this episode with my good friend Dan Bain from ICM Partners in Los Angeles, California. My friends, we are going to grow and get better together. This is not about me. This is about us. Welcome to Win Today with Johnny Martin. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Win Today with your boy, Johnny Martin. I uh, cannot tell you guys how happy I am to be doing this podcast today on location by the way, in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, for WrestleMania 34, a huge event run by the WWE, and my guest and I uh, are lucky enough and fortunate enough to be guests of uh, the WWE for this great event. I'm going to get right into it with him today because uh, I think we're going to cover a lot of ground together, and the goal always remains the same, folks. I want you to be able to take things away from every guest we have and every episode we have that resonate you with you in some way so that you can harness your talent, strengths, and gifts and begin to create your own why and live the life that you uh, earn. So with that being said, I am joined uh, today by a very, very dear friend of mine. He is a talent agent with ICM Partners. Uh, for those of you that are listening that are not aware of, of ICM Partners, this is a talent agency in Los Angeles, California, but with offices in New York. Uh, London, England, uh, and ICM represents folks like Ellen DeGeneres, Chris Rock, uh, Shonda Rhimes, who is the writer of Scandal and Grey's Anatomy, and the list goes on and on. Um, what brings my guest here with me today is a very dear and close mutual friend that we have in WWE superstar John Cena, and Dan represents John as his agent. Uh, but that is not why I really wanted to talk to Dan. Uh, when I was talking to John about putting these podcasts together, Dan was probably the first name that John mentioned as somebody that I should have on the podcast. And so just to give you an idea, I mean, if you if you have some thoughts around how far John Cena's reach is globally, uh, the gentleman I have with me here today was one of the first people John mentioned that I should speak with. So without any further ado, it is a pleasure to welcome my good friend, Dan Bame. Dan, how are you? I'm doing great. Wow. I don't know how I can follow that, yeah, but I'm, uh, yeah, I am well, humbled to be here. It, it's an honor to have you, man. It really is. We've had a lot of fun over the last couple of days in yes, New Orleans, uh, but more importantly than that, we've, you know, over the last decade built a pretty unbelievable friendship, which yes. I'm so grateful for. Well, before we get started, I just wanted to say how proud and thrilled I am of everything you are doing. Uh, I've li I look forward and list I've listened to every single one of your podcasts. And I was one of those people I know who kind of kept going at you and saying, Johnny, you got to do this, you have a true gift. And seeing how you have matured so quickly. Uh, I on behalf of all your listeners, keep it up, keep going. Thank you, brother. because I can't tell you how much I look forward to each and every week It means the world to me that you said that it's a great segue probably into me asking a follow up question, which is so that means at, at the conclusion of this episode, you'll be signing me to ICM. Yeah, you could 
<laughs> Depends on what I say. You may not want to sign by the end of this. But yeah, yes, right. I, I, I'll put the, pe- the pen and paper there for, right for you now. Awesome. So just, just so you guys understand how, how Dan and I came to get to know one another, it's actually a, a very, very funny story. We have to rewind, Danny, right? Uh, several years. Oh, boy. And Yeah. And so uh, Dan was, was uh, representing John at the time. Uh, but I had never met him, and so we got to rewind a bunch of years to we, and, when and you and I were after, in yeah. Miami, right? Yeah, and we we were at a wedding together, and we still never really. Yeah, met him. that's right. We did. We we attended the same wedding, but we still never, for whatever reason, really connected and crossed paths. So, if if you can fill in the blanks for me, but as best as I can remember it, I was in the hotel lobby with a buddy uh, that it, yes. you know, Mike, that has now become one of your great friends. Absolutely. And you uh, approached me, I think, and introduced yourself, yes. right? Yes, I did. Um, and, and if <laughs> I, knowing who I am, and you obviously know me very well now, I think you know you introduced yourself very politely and explained to me that you were John's. I was threatened, <laughs> yeah. you, you, and you had a law enforcement uh, officer uh, as your wingman. So uh, that was re- great. I was with a cop. Uh, so yeah, so you <laughs> <coughs> you introduced yourself to me, and I I think I think I said something to you like if you do anything to hurt my friend or steal from him or something like that. I was going to be six feet under. <laughs> yeah, I know we're at WrestleMania, but the Undertaker was definitely yeah, yeah. in effect. Oh, was, that's awesome. Yeah, and look at that. Despite the fact that we didn't get off to the the best start as for far as an introduction, uh, you are truly one of my best friends in the world. So. That was a great way to start, right? I, I will tell you this, in uh, in all fairness and truth to that, we that that everything you said is true, and we ended up having a really good night uh, that Sunday night afterwards. Yes, but I will never forget on my on the flight back I made um, back to uh, California that night. Uh, the next day, you sent me a, a, a text, great hanging out, looking forward to seeing you again. Wow! And it's amazing how those little things the in little... life really actually resonate. Yeah, and it's it's such a great point. I think in terms of the line of work you do, right, brother? Because the notion that most of us have about what a talent agent does, Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons that your clients have stayed so loyal and committed to you and why uh, you've had the amount of success you've had, not just with John, but with all the folks that you represent, is that your take on doing the job is a little bit different than what, per se, most people would think an agent's job is in representing their clients is that fair to say i think that's fair i think i i just try to be the best version of me that i could be and and as long as i focus on that the rest kind of handles itself yeah but i i one of the things that's always stuck with me is that you know in in all the years that we've spent together and we've really had a chance to talk about your industry and business one of the things that i was always struck by and what i really wanted to talk about today was uh, the importance for you, and I know you speak on it at your agency. I know it's a huge part of how you live your life, but it's uh, it's also the crux, the foundation by which you build your business is the the relationship piece, building relationships with people. Why for you is that something that like is that where you always start to the point where you've literally, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you've literally represented clients for years without monetizing the clients or yourself because it was more important for you to build that relationship. Yeah. I, I would say, uh, I've never really focused on the words or trying to build a relationship or create a relationship. Uh, we were with, uh, somebody within the WWE earlier this morning and they're trying to make the transition into, uh, Hollywood. Yeah. And this person who we both happen to think is a fantastic uh, human being yeah, that really was, like that was an interesting breakfast this morning that was really cool and he brought up the fact about being in los angeles and networking i've never and uh, i've had different people in different generations use that word it's a word that i've never really used N- networking I, I i just think that's um you're it's too it's not focused on reality it's more focused on a goal like i want to make a new relationship it's kind of like just dotting that and for me i i am an intimacy junkie and i love people i think i never wanted to or or desired to be an agent i just always felt in a very simplistic way i'm a really good friend and i'll always be honest i'll always been be sincere and i'll always be devoted and for those reasons it ended up being very helpful in my business life because I just wanted to always be there for my friends. And the way I looked at being an agent was if I can get my friends jobs, 
and I could watch their careers grow. How much fun would that be to see then my career grow? It's just such an interesting, such an interesting take on how you do, you know, in quotes, business, because it really flies in the face of business, whether it's corporate or, or any kind. For you, it's about staying true to who you are. And these people that you represent, who I would assume are not all friends to begin with. No. And that's sort of the point, is that through staying true to your principles, and I definitely want to talk about that a little bit more, because sure. I think that's the stuff for, for you guys that are listening that I think is so, so important. And what I'm learning through this journey myself, and you know, Danny, you and I, yeah. you are You're a constant, a constant source of uh, guidance for me. Mm -hmm. um, not just because you know the world that, the, uh, from a business perspective that I'm trying to sort of get into, but also because you, you're just as genuine as it gets. But I, what I find to be a huge problem with people, and I don't know if, if you find this in your line of work, maybe even more so because of the types of people that you work with is that nobody wants to, or very few people want to put the work in for the long game. They want everything yes. right away. They want it yesterday and they feel like, well, I'm an, I'm an agent or I'm a banker or I'm a teacher or I'm a speaker, I'm, whatever your line of work, this notion that, well, I have those credentials attached to my name, so I should just get these things quickly. And I don't think people invest in the stuff that you invest in, do you, you know what I mean? I do. I, I, I'll, I'll throw it right back at you uh, to go back to one of your first episodes. Because um, it's kind of how I try to hopefully live my life every day. Not every day is works as well as, it, as, I, as I set out well, for. It's life. There are a lot, of, a lot of speed bumps along the way. But you brought up that great Lou Holtz story. Yeah. And that quote about the difference between, between successful people and, significant, and being yeah, significant. Absolutely. And I try to live my life to be significant. And I feel if you're going to be an agent or very similar if you're uh, in, a, in a field where you're being a manager more than anything else. And I'm not talking about being, an eight, being a manager if you're working at the local staple store or a restaurant or any other place where you are sure. actually overseeing people. The more you can help other people become successful, the better you're going to be at your own job. Absolutely. So that's how I approach my job every single day. And I think the other piece of that, that I what I love about it, and I love the fact that you said that, that, that you can remove what you do specifically yes. from that. It's it's something that transcends a specific occupation. Yeah. Uh, but what I love about the whole significance piece, striving for significance, is that you also create a legacy, which for me, not just through the podcast or my speaking or as a dad or a husband, that's really important to me. Like, I don't minimize that at all. I, I want to know that I had the either the ability or at least gave it my best effort to try to leave something, whether it's, and, I, and not necessarily mo money, but so that people can use whatever maybe gifts we gave them and then they can give them to others. And, and so that's how you live on for, you know, forever. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've been very blessed. I have, I, I think I actually just told you the other day, I, I, I hit the lottery when it came to my parents Yeah, and, and I yeah. didn't have, uh, really an any aunts and uncles to speak of, but I had incredible mentors from some of my closest friends' parents um, to incredible coaches over the years. So I had an, an enormous um, uh, way, like, just a, like, I don't, I'm, I'm searching for the right word. But just but a great support system. Great support system, but also mentors who can teach me and, and made such an enormous difference in my life. And the way How I, important is that for you now, surrounding yourself? Everything, with, yeah. Because at the end of the day, when when you pass on and you move, and I think about legacy, legacy drives me yeah. so much. Me too, man. Because I'm not going to die with money. It's like, and, right. and it doesn't really make a difference. I can, I'm never going to make enough money where I'm going to be Warren Buffett and right. donate everything right. to the world. That, and God bless him for doing that. But if I can hopefully touch and affect other people's lives. I, I really, I take, a, that gives me more pride than anything. I really, uh, I don't love when people in my industry, if there's other agents or managers, and I've been blessed to have clients been nominated for Academy Awards and win Academy Awards. Yeah. But when those people talk about that they won the awards, no, they didn't do anything. They helped guide people's careers. That's right. And those clients did that, and yeah. they've earned it. And it's it's nice to be a part of it. And sure, I, I'm glad I could maybe make a deal for somebody who right. did it. But they're the but ones. But their who are doing talent, it. strengths, and gifts 
right. garnered that award. And, th- and that's the problem is making sure you take the ego out of the equation. It's a, pre- we, you know, we've talked about ego on other episodes too, is that it's, it, it, it can be our biggest, I don't know about if you feel this way, but like for me personally, so many of the reasons that I never tried so many of the things that I wanted to try or be, were, were because, and I've, I've learned this later on in life where I've sort of got this new outlook and it's like, you know what, man? Yeah, I was doing right by people and I was living pretty well, and but I wasn't a great, I wasn't being a great husband. I wasn't being a great father. I wasn't being as present as I should have been. And, and I realized it's because of my insecurities, i.e. ego was standing in the way, you know? So I think your greatest growth comes when you can be cognizant all the time that am I making this decision about because it's about me or am I making this decision because it's the best decision to make for all of the people in my circle that I really love and, and how will it affect them? You and allow I mean? yourself to fail because the truth is how can you actually have any wins or successes if you've never actually failed? Because then you don't know what it is what That's it's like to win true but in your line of work though brother like is it harder to handle because the fails in your line of work could potentially be million dollar fails or... you fail all the time yeah i mean it's a conversation that uh john and i have almost daily is that it's we, we people remember all the successes a lot of times but trust me the failures hurt a lot more a lot worse of course you, you could ask tom brady how he feels about the, those, all the, he's won five Super Bowls, but I can tell you right now, I, I imagine yeah, he, he'll focus, talk. That's right. he, he focuses more on the ones That's he's so lost. True. I know you're a Patriots fan, but uh, yeah, but sure. no, it's true. It's true, man. It, and, and he, but I just think, you know, and for the people listening to, I just think there's this, um, we don't learn to embrace it enough. Oh, we, failure is fantastic though, because then when you finally do have a win, you can actually appreciate it. I think that one of the biggest things I really, uh, that for the growth in me more than anything else is I'm not as afraid of failure as I used to be. I look at it now as I've died many, many times, but you're never going to kill me. Yeah. Because now I, I, in one of your other episodes, I've been also very fortunate to meet Rourke Denver. Yeah. He's and what man, he was ridiculous. Yeah. So the guy was ridiculous and I, he, yeah, he, he's an amazing individual. And one of the things he talks about is try something, do something tough every single day. Every day. And it, and it's really true. Yeah. Because Learn all of, something new and try something hard every yeah. single day. It'll only make you better and stronger. Yeah. And I think it gives you a chance to really figure out like this medium for me and being able to not just talk to you, you know, in an episode, but, but being able to talk to you pretty daily as it relates yes. to our lives and, and our growth professionally and personally, which is way more important um that's the the huge piece that i think people are missing is that we just don't most people aren't willing to go through the tough stuff and be told no and fall on their face and pick themselves back up and and for me personally it's been the greatest source of growth for me over the last couple of years I, i think that's a big issue in our society right now is people are more concerned about image than they are about who they really are yeah image and stuff right yeah like image and stuff they're way more concerned about things than they are about relationships than they are about building what you and i are talking about right yes. now if people focus more on that we have a much more i think first of all people will be a lot happier i think we'll be able to get a lot more things done and i think when you really talk about it in a work environment that's where you become the most productive and i know uh, and unfortunately at times we've had to make certain decisions uh, within our own agency and, my, and the department I'm in where we weren't all working together yeah. and therefore we had to make certain changes to ensure the growth and because nobody is bigger than the than the entire group that has to be a difficult those have to be difficult conversations to navigate to navigate I would think when you're in the line of work you're in with people who are I'm guessing uh, you know pretty like-minded in terms of uh work the work life and and um a lot of a lot of egos in that room i would imagine you yeah there's a lot of egos when you're dealing with it within an agency and well just the industry you're in right you're in you're in absolutely it's it's for the most part especially the work you do it's the entertainment business uh and that's driven right by us by guys like me and gals around the world who want the products or the shows or the movies that you are working to get your clients involved in. 
So I would assume it's pretty cutthroat in a lot of ways. As there well. is. But, and I also think uh, one of the lessons that our industry is learning is that we have to, and I, is that we're a reflection of society. I think one of the great stories of, of 2018 is the success of Roseanne. And when you really break down Roseanne, the, the top media markets are in Oklahoma City. It's in Texas. And it had the highest ratings in three and a half years on network television for a comedy. Wow. And it's not in New York and Los right, Angeles. Right. And you, what you really understand is that we have to make products for everybody. And, and I think what I've really grown to love about my job is traveling and getting to meet and, and getting to know different types of people. Sure. Because literally from all over the world, right? Yeah. What was crazy is I remember a few months ago we talked and you were on a stretch of like, what was it, like 15 days, but it like five countries in 15 days we, uh, or something like that? We went truly around the world in 13 days. That's crazy. Just just for the people that are listening, in a real quick like soundbite, give us your tr loop of travel we on that start, trip. We started in, uh, I was in Los Angeles, to Sydney, to Dubai, to London, to Washington, D.C., to New York, to Miami, and back to Los Angeles. In 13 days? Yes. All business. I, we had a really good time, but yeah, it was business. And you were, by the end of that trip... Uh, you were wiped. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. How many? Any idea? Just out of curiosity, how many different time zones that is? Uh, it was. Uh, Do you get to a point where you don't even know like what what day it is? When when we were in Dubai, it was pretty tough because it was tr uh, twelve hours um, from uh, Los Angeles, so it was completely oh. flipped. So what I would do is I would set um, my alarm. I, I would go to bed around twelve p.m. Okay. Or 12 a.m. Yeah. And set my alarm at 4 a.m. to make calls. Because you had to be on the uh, yeah. in the States. You Just had to be because, calling people in the States. And then they would go to bed, do whatever we had to do during work. I was traveling with John for yep. Ferdinand. And so then I would just, you just set the alarm. You just kind of figure it out. You, yeah. You just kind of have to make it work. Was it a similar, you haven't, it, I don't feel like it's it's been as crazy for Blockers, the new movie that came out in terms of your travel, because it hasn't been as bad, right? No, we just went. We, I mean, it was, it was a lot, but it, it, yeah. we made it work. Yeah, and um, and, and for those of you that are listening, I, I just referenced the movie Blockers. You know, uh, we, uh, Dan and I had a chance to go to a, a screening Friday. Uh, when when this episode airs, it'll you know the movie will be a a month or so old. Uh, but we had a chance to see it just a couple days ago down here in New Orleans. And uh, when I say funny, guys, this is a movie that, and not because he's my best friend, but this is a movie that you ha you have to go see. Like in the same vein as uh, Animal House and uh, Caddyshack have become like these cult classics, I'm telling you that this movie is is going to do the same thing. Um, it, was, it was a lot of fun, man. Thank you. <laughs> if you really want me to, if you really want to help out what well, you should probably air the show closer yeah so that's you know what i will you know what you're right I, if, that's you want, fair. If, if you want more people to go see the movie you know that, that's fair i will run it this week <laughs> um for you like getting into this business when you got out of school you know you went to you went to school in washington dc right yep. you went to george washington when you got out of school did you know you wanted to be a talent agent or did not it, remotely how did it happen uh it's a, it's a, I'll make it as quick as sure, possible. Yeah. When I was when I was in college, I really wanted to be a writer. I love the whole creative process, and I moved. To, I knew I would be a terrible waiter because I waited tables when I was in college, and and I got the pity tips. I mean, I was really you just weren't good at it. I was really bad. Yeah. I'm kind of a big klutz, so put, putting me you in the kitchen. You love to eat, though. You, I, you're, I do. You're a fan of I'm fine a, food. I'm a, I'm a professional eater. You're good at it, but. I am not a good waiter. Yeah. So I, when I moved to, I had, I was very fortunate. I interned for uh, in ABC News. I worked for a guy named Sam Donaldson, who most of the listeners probably here don't know, um, but he was the chief White House correspondent for ABC, and then he also had a a big political show on ABC. And I used his name. I had a great recommendation for him that I had handwritten, and I dropped it off at all the major talent agencies. Wow. Because working, for your listeners who don't work in the entertainment business, working as an assistant at a talent agency is very similar, is really getting your master's, in a sense. Yeah, hey, you and I were just business. talking about this yesterday. Yes. 
and uh, I, I, I was saying to, to you when we were talking yesterday, I'm like, you have another assistant already? I mean, I feel like every time I ca- call the office, there's somebody else that works for you. Yeah, and, and my Pauline, who works for me right now, I give a lot of credibility credit to because uh, when I interviewed with her, she told me how she – uh, her parents were both immigrants, and she paid her way through the University of Pennsylvania. Wow. And to me, that shows the work ethic and somebody that I want to have on my team. Yeah, that's uh, That's somebody I want to be in the bunker with. So getting a job or working at a talent agency, most people who are studio executives or a lot of people who are producers have kind of grown up that way. So that's why I decided to go that route. And I was fortunate enough to work with a, a mutual friend named Paul Hook. Yeah, he's a great man. And uh, I really did not want to uh, be an agent. He knew that. Uh, my first interview with him was a negotiation of when I was going to start. So uh, we met in the middle. And <laughs> <laughs> he wanted two weeks. I, or he wanted me to start right away. I wanted two weeks, yeah, so yeah. I gave him a week. And then uh, you got going. Hit the ground running. We got going. And a uh, long story short is I really didn't want to do it because I didn't really like agents because I felt they were sharks. Yeah. Um, I didn't find that I have a lot in common with a lot of them, and I wanted to be more creative. And <clears throat> in the same vein I was saying about friends, I had, two fr- uh, I had two roommates at the time. They were both unemployed looking for a job. And there was a client of ours uh, who was close to my age. And we went out and we had a drink and just started talking about our lives. And I realized that night, if I could help her get a job and, and, put, and, and help her move forward, and that would actually help my career. And now she's won an Emmy Award and she, wow. she is the reason why I became an agent. And, and I, I literally, I went to Paul and I said, Paul, I'm, let's go do it. And truthfully, I don't know if I'd still do it if, uh, if I never met John. Yeah. I think the, re- the relationship I have with him well, is... Yeah, you guys are brothers. It's not... It's so... We talk about this all the time, but it's so far beyond business at this point. Oh. I mean, um, and not that you haven't done a phenomenal job because you have that. I mean, very... So he's, But he's also an unbelievably driven worker and you guys share that work ethic and passion. Oh, thank you. But what's That's funny, what, what's funny to me, you, you know, that you mentioned before is that because I talk all the time about matching passion with purpose and that it's really difficult to, to have longevity in something that you're not passionate about. And so for the people that are listening, you know, the takeaway for me and you and I've had thousands of conversations, but even as we're having this one that we're recording, you made me think of something really powerful in that just because you are doing something right now, you know, you can't, I don't think you should go into it with the mindset that I'm never going to do this and I'm going to hate it because what you didn't think you would like in an industry that you didn't think you would like you've ended up doing for 20 years now, right? Or yeah. close to 20 years. And, and, and I would guess, I don't, certainly don't want to speak for you, but I would guess that you not only uh, grew to like it, but that you now you love what you're doing and you get to use that creativity in a different way. Yeah, that's actually a fair point. And I'm really, well, and really accurate. I, I think the big thing, which I've also taken away is a lot of the issues I have with some of the younger assistants who want to become agents and i've been fortunate for a bunch of years to co-run our trainee program yeah. and uh and i'm very grateful and thankful to the guy the two uh, individuals um who are now running it but when i would talk to young assistants and young agents they were especially young assistants they would so focus on getting promoted and i find that it's a very common belief and feeling for people not just in my industry but in other industries and if they just focused on the work rather than actually um, focus on getting promoted they would actually be be better at what they do and get promoted that much faster yeah and and what you just brought up I think transcends people's jobs period it doesn't have to be an Italian agency no uh, People, you have to trust the process. Yes. Right. And I think that's a, a huge piece. Is like, it's the hardest thing for all of us. Yeah, oh yeah. It's because we, we especially when you're in it. it. Yeah. And and I was going to say when you're in the thick of it, and I've seen you working, and I've seen how much is involved. You know, um, but I don't think people trust the process enough. Thank you so much, friends, for listening to part one of my great conversation with Dan Bame, talent agent from ICM Partners. Stay tuned for episode two as we continue to discuss 
Dan's work with celebrities and athletes from across the country and around the globe. Thank you to Seven Roads Media and Cloud9 Marketing Group for co-producing the show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever platform you're on. Without you, I cannot continue to do what I love. You can follow me personally on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real John C. Martin. I'd love to hear from you, so please reach out with comments and questions after each episode. Your comments push me to get better every day. As always, thank you for your continued support, and don't forget, win today.